Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video today. I'm gonna to go over the four subtypes of borderline personality disorder. Before I do, please, if you guys could, subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that very much and all your support. And if you can, vote on it, up or down, tell me why. Comment down there if you can and share this video wherever possible, I'd appreciate that, thank you. So let's get into it. Um, lots of misinformation out there about borderline personality disorder. I have been studying this disorder for several years. Um, it's a very interesting and sad disorder. And um, I've learned more and more about it as I've gone. Uh, some of the things I learned in the beginning, I don't believe are correct or accurate. Like I said, there's a ton of different uh, conflicting information. If you go and search uh, about this disorder, you'll, you'll see that. So today I'm just gonna offer the four subtypes of borderline personality disorder. Uh, most of the information I got to give them credit is from Optimum Performance Institute. Um, that's where I got most of this information. Like I said, I've, I look everywhere as, as much as possible and really try to understand this disorder. I have many of you that watch my videos that have the disorder. Thank you for watching, welcome. And um, I have a lot of clients that have had relationships with people that have borderline personality disorder. And the more I understand it, the more I can understand these people and the people they, that I'm trying to help. And a lot of you may be able to um, understand people that have abused you or people that have been in toxic relationships with that have the disorder. Maybe that'll help you understand and alleviate a lot of the guilt and the shame and make sense of it all. Um, so, many facets to borderline personality disorder. This is a spectrum disorder like many others. Meaning, as I read a lot of these traits, um, a lot of you watching that don't have the disorder, who may think you might have the disorder, uh, will identify and, and, and see that you may have some of these traits. That does not mean you have the disorder itself. These are things to be aware of, things you can change if you like, things like that. Um, if there's a certain diagnostic criteria that has to be met to actually have the disorder, okay? Um, many overlapping traits. I know a lot of you guys ask me, what's the difference between borderline and narcissist or borderline and sociopath, psychopath, histrionic, things like this. And I've made other videos about this. Feel free to go look through them. I have them in different categories of playlists. I have a borderline personality playlist, a histrionic, many narcissist videos, psychopath, sociopath videos. I have a video coming out soon, maybe next that uh, talks more about the differences between narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. And this is something that can be very difficult to diagnose. I don't want anyone out there to try to self-diagnose, and I don't want anybody out there to try to diagnose others. I wanna be clear that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a mental health practitioner, I'm a life coach, um, but I do believe that I go to uh, credible sources to find information like this to tell you guys, to relate it to you. Um, the same institute also suggests that there's about 1-2% to 2 people of people in society in America that are affected by this disorder. I absolutely know, <laughs> I mean I can't know, but I, I totally believe way more, way more than 1-2%, to 2 extremely more, extremely more. I've heard of some uh, incredible numbers. Like I said, lots of misinformation out there. So you've, I've got sites that say 1-2%. to 2 of people are affected by this disorder. I've heard of up to a third, up to a fourth of women have it. So lots of conflicting uh, stuff out there. But this institute and like many others say one to 2% and about 10% of institution, mental health institutions uh, have patients who are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. So the four types, just to get them out there real quick, is impulsive, the impulsive borderline, the petulant borderline, the discouraged borderline and the self-destructive borderline. Those are the four subtypes I'm going to go over today. First one, and I'm just gonna read a bunch of this, uh, go list, uh, list the traits. So impulsive borderline, flirtatious, charming, um, capturing or captivating, magnetic or magnetism, right? You're kind of drawn to them. These are kind of antisocial traits as well narcissistic traits as well. Superficial, entertaining, but total surface level stuff. Um, maybe not get in depth into conversations, maybe you know, say I feel this way, but doesn't know why, can't explain it. 
lacking details, things like this. High energy and easily bored. Very, very common, I think, with, with uh, borderlines. Attention-seeking behavior. And that, that goes all kinds from um, the poor me victim playing. So they're dramatic and they do uh, uh, act like a victim or they victim play a lot. Poor me, self-pity, things like this. That is attention-seeking behavior. Do it for me, help me, be there for me. And highly manipulative. Highly manipulative. Second one is the petulant borderline. Angry, irritable. Very common for borderlines to have very, very uh, uh, uncontrollable anger. Uh, they vacillate between fear of rejection and abandonment and need to rely on people. So that's, that's a, you know, a dichotomy. That's, that's very contradicting and, and must be difficult to deal with. The fear of rejection and abandonment, but totally rely and dependent on people. I need you, but you're going to reject me. Things like this. Difficult self-soothing. Uh, difficult taking care of themselves emotionally and say, I'm going to be okay and everything's going to be all right and you're a good person. They really rely on other people to do that. And it, when they don't, they have difficulty dealing with this. And it's very common to have eating disorders and addiction disorders, drugs and alcohol, eating, sex. And anxious, controlling, possessive, and jealous. So this real, real, real super... Fear of abandonment, and you're going to leave me. Jealous, I'm going to lose you. Who are you talking to? You can't talk to them. Let me see your phone. Um, oh, I bet you just want her. I bet you want her. You know, Or I bet you want him. Yeah. Um, very common, too. Absolutely. Discouraged borderline. The discouraged borderline. Clingy, passive, reliant on others. So sometimes we call them the quiet. Quiet. The, the passive, maybe passive aggressive, and extremely reliant on others. Turn feelings of anger inward. So maybe not um, gonna freak out on you, attack you, violent towards you, but towards himself. Self mutilation and suicidal behaviors, suicidal talk. Um, I used to want to commit suicide. I've tried to commit suicide. I've, I want to die. I don't see the point in living. This might be a common theme. With this, with this type of person. Um, and the self-mutilating. You know, something, the, the most common mutilation we'll see, cutting, cutting to alleviate their inward pain, how much they're hurting inside. Um, <coughs> we'll feel emptiness, intolerance. Everything's annoying. It's not going my way, and I feel so empty inside. They might literally say that. I've, I've heard that very commonly. People with borderline personality disorder say that. I feel empty inside and it, more if I don't know who I am um, fear of being alone and exacerbated exacerbated fear of being alone can't be by myself standing I mean I've heard so much as um, when I take a shower I, I've heard people tell me uh, my girlfriend was borderline and when she would take a shower uh, I she literally want me to sit on the toilet you know with her and sometimes even hold hands I'm not kidding Holding hands. Um, Self-destructive borderline. Harbors intense feelings of bitterness and self-hatred. Attention-seeking behaviors. Self-injurious injurious behaviors. Things like reckless driving, substance abuse, risky sexual behavior, um, one night stands, meet someone, have sex with them, never use any protection, may even know and be aware that they have an STD and don't care and eating disorders very common with the other one but um, very very reckless doesn't care what happens to them I, I've known a, a borderline like this that could literally just get wasted anywhere and not even realize like you're gonna be in danger there's no one there to help you take care of you just get totally drunk and and black out and wake up uh, awake on a sidewalk somewhere in the morning just Wow, um, people like this may be very commonly abused, um, raped, molested as younger. So those are the four subtypes. And hopefully, uh, people with borderline, maybe that helped you with some more new information. I don't know. Let me know. Um, and maybe increase self-awareness. Hopefully, uh, others of you will 
maybe this will help you understand the person in your life that suffered from this disorder. It's a very, very sad, sad disorder. It really is. And I'm learning more and more about it. Um, there's so much involved with this disorder and how they became this way. Don't forget there's three parts that make up who somebody is and it's not just our childhood, which is a major factor, but also genetic. There's people that can be um, predisposed to this more, more highly, uh, high chances that they will have this disorder or develop this disorder. And uh, culture helps too form who somebody is. Um, let me know, guys, what you think down there. I'd appreciate it. Uh, give me examples, stuff like this, and always ask questions. And anybody that's interested in coaching with me or my services, you can reach me at daviddemars.com. Ask me anything you want. Thank you. Love yourself first, guys. I'll, I'll see you again. Bye.